Yeah, good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Anirudh Deswandikar. I am from Microsoft. And uh, I think looking at the topic, a lot of you must be quite confused as to why is a Microsoft person coming and talking about surveillance. Um, so let me demystify that a little bit um, so that you don't just get up and leave. Um, so I, I had a uh, organization inside Microsoft uh, called the Microsoft Technology Center. Uh, it's basically a center uh, here in the Domlur office where we uh, invite customers and we do a lot of uh, strategy and uh, technology discussions. Uh, so typically customers walk in uh, with uh, a certain set of problems. Uh, you know, typically these problems are enterprise uh, kind of problems. Uh, these could be like productivity related things or collaboration related things. Uh, we also help smaller companies, ISVs and things like that. But the idea is sort of to get customers in, have a discussion in terms of what their aim is and what their objectives are and, uh, and discuss a solution. Uh, and in a lot of cases, also showcase the solution to them so that they, are, they make a very informed decision about building their technology stack uh, and also understand what Microsoft has to offer. Now as a part of this, in the past, I would say about six months or so, we have been getting a lot of requests for security in general and surveillance being one part of that. Um, I think a lot of companies today, uh, especially with the Internet of Things coming in, are talking about security. And all of the RFPs that we get uh, typically from customers has that line of surveillance in it. And so we started sort of looking at it and we found that you know, there are a lot of thoughts about it. Uh, there are various uh, things that these customers have in their minds in terms of how, what it means to them. Uh, and so we started researching, uh, and in the process, we also uh, met up with a lot of partners who are building uh, these kind of solutions on our platform, uh, one of them being Analog Devices, which is uh, organizing uh, this, uh, this uh, event itself. And we started collaborating with them to see what intelligent systems can be built using surveillance, and how can surveillance be made better uh, with uh, technology, with IoT, with the cloud, and you know, all those things. And that's why, that's the reason why I am here, because we have found some insights into how those problems can be solved, or how those problems can be addressed. More importantly, what are the solutions out there uh, right now in terms of uh, ready-to-use uh, things. So I'm not a surveillance expert, you know, I'm not, if you give me I mean, I generally know how these things are connected, uh, but I have not like taken a camera and tried to sort of fit things in. But my my um, my area of interest is more around what you can do with that surveillance data and how you can make it uh, really intelligent. So the agenda is going to be something like this, where you basically have some amount of discussion on what uh, the security challenges are in a city. What environment are we working in? A lot of times, uh, there is a lot of dream about achieving certain things, uh, but you know the environment is very different, and we need to understand uh, that environment. Uh, some possible solutions. Uh, I will discuss what the customers are asking us to do, and what we suggest that they should be doing uh, in order to get some value out of it, and some currently available uh, products and solutions, and where the Microsoft framework fits, right? So that's basically the, uh, the agenda. Um, I am also of a, you know, typically in all my talks that I do, I always like to sort of take a little bit of history in terms of uh, trying to figure out how, where, where are we today and how have we come to where we are today because that really helps in terms of thinking about solutions. So some of the uh, solution challenges today. So clearly cities are exploding. I know Bangalore itself is, I mean, I think we are great examples or uh, we are witness uh, to how that happens. In the last 10 years of my, uh, this in the city itself, uh, the city has grown drastically with, you know, it's just, uh, just an explosion of, of, um, of population, especially in the cities. Manual security is getting costlier because of that. Uh, so that's the average 
for for Bangalore, it's about 130 uh, police uh, people per uh, lakh of um, uh, citizens, and to maintain that cost, uh, you know, as this as the uh, city grows, it is difficult to have uh, that many uh, police people policing the streets, and it just becomes a big issue in terms of security. Terrorism is now a global threat. Uh, you know, a few years ago, it was thought that you know there are only certain countries that face this issue, but I think 9/11 and incidences like that has changed everything. Now everyone is into this uh, war of uh, fighting terror. And so that has become a huge uh, need for today to, to this. And I have some great examples of how certain cities are doing that today effectively. And more public services increase security surface area. So this is a, a very interesting problem because as the city grows, you have more services. You have more ATMs, you have more malls being built, uh, you have more electricity grids being built, um, you know, and all these are susceptible to, to attacks. Uh, and that is why it just becomes a huge uh, sort of a challenge to make sure that you're really protecting everything. Uh, and that's where, again, from a size perspective, especially in cities, it becomes a huge challenge for, for security. And then privacy is a growing concern. I mean, I think there is, uh, if you have attended Terry's P, uh, keynote, she mentioned, you know, it just takes three credit card transactions to figure out who you are, right? So imagine what can happen if there's a lot of things uh, trying to monitor you. So uh, surveillance is not new. It has been there. Uh, traditionally, it has been there. In the olden days, they used to have towers like these at the entrances, people watching what's going on, and they used to then shout out what's going on to the uh, inside uh, teams, and then you know necessary actions will be taken. We have basically just taken this model, and for at least a good part of the year or a good part of the uh, for the for a, for a period, we basically replaced it with a camera, which is now sitting at the entrances, and you have basically a center that's monitoring these things, right? And so now I'm a I'm a bit of a movie buff, if you will, before Microsoft, I used to work for a company called Netflix. Uh, so, you know, and I, I, I personally believe in this philosophy called life imitates art. How many of you have seen Matrix, right? And so I, I personally believe that, you know, uh, humans tend to sort of imagine things uh, and then they try to achieve those things, right? And so if you look, if you see the trend of uh, any kind of, uh, I would say, action thriller kind of movies in the past two, three decades, you would have seen that in the olden times of the 80s and the 90s, if there was a movie where some sort of a hostage situation is being, uh, being played out, the first thing they take out is the center and the person sitting there, right? Because now it, the person watching those videos is gone. So it doesn't really matter now how much of surveillance they have in this whole building just one point of failure, just take that guy out and you're done. But if you, if you sort of see the trend now in movies, it's no longer as simple as just taking that one guy looking at the monitors out, right? Because there are, there are all sorts of cameras on you, There's all, they are all connected to a very sophisticated system. Uh, it is very difficult to escape. So anybody who saw Spectre will probably relate to that, that you can, you're basically being watched wherever you go, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so surveillance today is more like you have the regular surveillances, you have surveillance on the streets, you have surveillance in your ATMs, you have surveillance on your uh, you know, airports and bus stations and train stations, you have surveillance in you know, events, and then you also have your satellite surveillance, right? So suddenly surveillance that used to just monitor the entrances of buildings has now moved to all these things that now need to get connected. But sadly, for a good portion of the period again, is that the way things are monitored was still the same. It's still at a central location, people watching those monitors and things like that. So it's kind of, uh, we are at that, I think, period. And that's the reason why we are seeing a lot of customers coming to us to solve this problem. Because we are at that cusp where a lot of investment has happened 
into surveillance, but people are not able to get uh, the required information out of it or the re required uh, return on investment in terms of uh, that, that investment. So traditional you know, analysis, if you look at, uh, basically an incident has to happen. You then go, uh, you, know, you find out which, what's the date and time for that incident, and then you find the window of footage and you analyze it. And then depending on the accuracy of the date, whether the camera was working at that time or not and all, you're able to at some level find out what's going on. And this is still going on. So I myself was, have witnessed this a bunch of times. Uh, once I went into my bank and there was you know, a lot of uh, uh, chaos going on in the bank. I didn't know, I just asked the lady what happened. She said, there's been a robbery at the, at the ATM. So all these people were inside the bank trying to get the footage uh, for, for the cameras. And I thought, at that, that moment itself, I thought this is so inefficient, uh, that you have to actually come to the bank, look at the footage, and do something with it. So traditionally, today, most of the systems are connected like this, that you have the cameras. They are connected to some sort of a DVR or maybe a network camera, if it's an IP camera, but it finally, the end point is within the organization itself onto some machine, right? And so if you have to retrieve that data, you have to actually go to that machine, retrieve the, vi the video footage, and then sort of monitor it. So the collection is very manual, right? And so, and it's, this is still the case. I mean, at least in India, it is still uh, done this way. Now, challenges with this is obviously it's very reactive. Um, you know, you only after the incident that you actually start, you know, uh, and by the time you find out things and all, it's already too late. Uh, you know, you you already lost a lot of energy in just finding the incidents. So prevention from a perspective of a future prevention and all becomes very difficult. So it's very time consuming uh, and it does not scale, right? So this is a solution that most of the customers are coming and asking us to do. This is very common. Uh, so whenever we ask them, okay, what is the solution? So they say, we want this. We want all the security cameras in our organization put onto some central cloud-like storage and then we want to run analytics on it or analyze it or whatever it is, right? So this is the most common solution that we are being asked to build. And when, we, when they come to the MTC, we are, usually the discussion goes around this, this uh, kind of solution. Now the challenge with this solution is that sure, you get centralized storage. You don't have to run to that particular camera to get your images. You still, you have it centrally stored. You're accessing the videos, it's easier to do that. Processing the videos is easier because you all have it on centrally and you can manage the processing part of it if you're running any anal analytics on it. But the cons are it's still very reactive. Bandwidth costs are very high. And the smart city, uh, you know, basically the amount of data that now gets collected suddenly at a central place is very high. So clearly, again, not a very scalable solution. It solves some problems, but it's still not a scalable solution. So the solution then is, well, Internet of Things, right? So instead of bringing all this data into a central location and then trying to do some analysis on it in real time uh, is difficult, it's very difficult. And so we need to sort of come up with some sort of a distributed architecture for this. Um, and that's where Internet of Things really is helping because today you could take a camera like this, right? A very simple looking camera. You can actually, and you'll find enough articles on this, on how to convert this camera into an intelligent camera. You can rip it apart. You can add a, a Raspberry Pi type of board. Anybody here familiar with Raspberry Pis? Right, generally, okay. And similar boards, there are many other boards available. Uh, you could take one of those and integrate it uh, with this camera, right? Now suddenly you have processing power on the camera itself. And there are ample image processing algorithms available today, very out of the box available today, that you could use to actually process that image and make some meaning out of it. So suddenly 
the dumb feed that you are trying to put onto the internet is now becoming intelligent because at source, you are able to now figure out what might be going on, right? And we'll see examples of this. So suddenly, your dumb camera is now an intelligent camera. It's a smart camera. It can do things. Uh, in certain cases, you know, we have, we have we we working with uh, uh, another vendor um, or another partner named NEC. They have a very cool technology. I don't know again, life imitates art. Any one of you have seen the movie uh, Mission Impossible, the last one, the previous one, where this the beginning of the movie itself. There's a person walking on the on the railway track, and he has basically a a phone and a, some sort of glasses, which is recognizing faces, and and you thought that's like that's crazy, right? I mean, that's that's impossible to do. But if you if you look up, uh, I I would urge you. I unfortunately didn't put that video in here. But if you look up uh, something like NEC Neo Face Solution from NEC, it's 20 years of face recognition research uh, that has gone into it and does exactly that. As people walk in, they're able to recognize faces with all sorts of things. And their claim to fame is the Boston bomber uh, 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 incident, where they were able to recognize the Boston bomber from a, a surveillance footage and map it to the photograph that was given by the police. In the police photograph, the person is wearing a Christmas hat. And what comes from the surveillance has a beard and all sorts of stuff. And then they were still able to match that and say, here's your guy. And so that's their, uh, but that's the kind of intelligence we are talking about. Uh, and that intelligence might need a little bit more than a Raspberry Pi, but still can be done in real time. So what can you do with these intelligent uh, cameras, right? Some simple things, for example, presence and absence of objects, right? Very clear. Certain, uh, certain Western countries don't allow people to be on the railway track. So the railway tracks are usually empty. So suddenly, if you see somebody there, that's a very easy image processing algorithm to process and say somebody is there, right? Which you can quickly figure out and send the alerts uh, as required. Departing objects, again, a very simple uh, image processing algorithm which it, where it makes an entity out of one person with a bag, and if those two things start departing, that if the person has left the bag somewhere and is moving away, then that's, again, something which is very simply can be detected on the camera itself to figure out that something might be going wrong. Gestures and actions. Uh, enough technology available to figure out a human frame. Uh, very interesting incidents here, again, or a very interesting uh, use case here. In Brazil, uh, there is a, a company that built a solution on Kinect. How many of you are aware of Kinect? Right? Yeah. So Kinect is a very, very simple uh, device for specially gestures. Uh, if you go to Rio, Rio is a very dangerous uh, city. A lot of the crime rates are very high. And one of their highest crimes are around uh, store, you know, uh, basically robberies, where people come in, walk into the store with a gun and just, you know. Now, one company realized that the most common action for the storekeeper to do when somebody enters with a gun is this. And that is the simplest gesture for Kinect to recognize. So they have a Kinect camera placed hidden into the store, and the moment see, they see this action, they immediately call the cops. So the system itself makes a call to the cops, and you know, and they've been able to. The ROI on this was so high, you know, that it was just <laughs> a very uh, simple solution, but something that really worked. Real time, any kind of uh, coloring, cloth coloring, processing, uh, color uh, processing again, very. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't know. All right. I'll hurry up. Yeah? Are you sure? How much? Because, you know, we, we roll here. So yeah, yeah. So I know that. But I thought we'll just reset the, this. But that's OK. How much time do I have then? Five minutes? Uh, not too much. You know, OK. I dictated it. Five All right. Minutes, so. Because you want us to take two minutes or five minutes. Or sure. OK. Yeah, I'm almost uh, this. Yeah. I will just probably then do one thing. Here's the better solution that you, along with the video feeds, you also give in real time alerts, right? And so both go together, in which case you still have your old solution there in terms of analyzing, doing all analytics and all that. But what this also helps you do is to alert. Alert officials, alert all sorts of uh, you know, people who need to be there. 
It could be medical alerts or whatever it is. But it's a very simple thing to do, and it originates from the camera itself, so there's no additional processing required. So here's an example of a few things that we have done. Uh, we recently had a partnership with analog, de analog devices where we are building some intelligent uh, systems. Uh, so the analog devices has come up with a camera that can do some amount of pr processing on the camera itself. One of their solutions is for an ATM. So if you can just play. How do you detect certain things in an ATM? So this is a double, two, multiple person. So if there are two people in an ATM, uh, this, that's not a good sign, right? So you need to, you, you could detect that. So if you see in the, in the corner, you will see alerts coming up. Those alerts are being generated by the camera saying that there are two people in the ATM, right? Similarly, fault detection. Right? So similarly, if you can go to the next one. Yeah, here's one for occupancy, um, where there is nothing and suddenly something comes in. And this is a very common situation, especially in manufacturing, in all sorts of other uh, you know, uh, electrical grids, uh, these cell phone towers. These are places where there should be nobody. If there is somebody, then it's an issue, right? So if people walk into this area, you will basically get uh, this. Again, alerts are generated by the camera itself. So we are working on taking these alerts, putting it onto the cloud, and then doing some analytics on it and saying, hey, you know, how many times did this happen? Make, give, say, data to ATM. From an ATM perspective, give data to banks saying, hey, you know, this ATM seems to be having more frequent incidences and things like that so that they can make uh, adjustments and save uh, any future incidences. Here's another solution from, um, so this, I would like to play this video if you allow me. But what so if the cameras could all be watched in real time? Yeah, so this is, this is New York City today, after 9-11. And just watch what they have done. Time at a central location. Amazingly, today there is only one city where this is known to be possible. New York. Two trips were going to show it. When it comes to technology, Police Commissioner Ray Kelly is a true believer and an early adopter. We're big fans of cameras here. It's been a tremendous force multiplier, if you will, for uh, law enforcement. The city's ambitious effort to connect and monitor thousands of surveillance cameras has never been tried before. The result is called the Domain Awareness System. This is the state of the art. It is the most sophisticated camera system that you'll see across the world. Domain awareness takes in a steady stream of data from license plate readers, environmental sensors, and 4,000 closed circuit cameras, the vast majority privately owned. The city designed the system after carefully studying the extensive CCTV network in London and trying to improve on it. The reason that this is state of the art is because this shows officers in real time what's happening rather than being useful mainly for post-incident investigations as is the system in London. 911, where is your emergency? The system is integrated with 911 calls, so possible terrorist activity is flagged and detailed information about the address is displayed, as well as the location of nearby cameras, which can be called up live or rewound as far back as 30 days. It reads license plates in every lane of every bridge and tunnel coming into Lower Manhattan and compares them to terror watch lists. It is also programmed to automatically spot suspicious behavior, like unattended bags sitting on a sidewalk. And it can search through huge amounts of video data to find specific shapes, movements, or colors. Watch what happens when you ask it to look for people wearing red near the New York Stock Exchange. It's really a matter of one or two seconds. If these cameras weren't all on one system, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go to a poll, retrieve the video data, and then each camera would have to be looked at individually by a person 
pull out the red shirt. So that's uh, basically with, in collaboration with Microsoft. Uh, is, that system was built uh, recently. I think about 2012 is when it started. Uh, so that's about it. I will not spend time on all this. Uh, well, this is the Microsoft stack for IoT in general. 